thoughts on this conventional treatment and management of the disease, such as you know the DASH diet, limiting sodium, or using statins? You know that's that's what we're being taught in dietetic school, and you know they they haven't mentioned anything about plant based diets. What are your thoughts on on these conventional methods? Well, uh, I think that where all these dictums uh, finally have an opportunity to settle out is when everybody becomes familiar with the outcomes. Now, what I would encourage the, the faculty at medical school, uh, which is really right now quite tragic, because med at medical school, physicians really learn nothing about nutrition, and they learn nothing about behavioral modification. And I doubt that it's too much different a dietetic school, but I, uh, I have great, I guess I'm an optimist, and I have great hope that those things will change. I, I think if the faculty at dietetic school becomes familiar with the fact that, I mean, there's no question, the DASH diet is better than the traditional horrible Western diet. Uh, just like the Mediterranean diet might be the second best diet. But in other words, you can still produce coronary artery disease with the Mediterranean diet. I mean, if you were to <clears throat> look at the outcomes of studies where they've taken patients with heart disease, comparing the, medic, the Ameri typical American diet and the Mediterranean diet, no question, the Mediterranean diet does better. But still, I'm thinking of the, uh, the classic one by De, Ro De Logaro, uh that was published in the early uh, 21st century. Uh, and when they followed those patients who were on the Mediterranean diet at the end of four years, 25% either were dead from heart disease or had another, another significant cardiac event. I don't consider that a triumph or any kind of uh, cure. But uh, we have found in our original research with a small group of patients that was really quite stunning and exciting to find that all those who were compliant, not only did they arrest their disease, but they began to reverse their disease, which was practically unheard of. Reverse their disease on the angiogram. You can see the, artery, the coronary arteries. We've seen, since seen it happen in the carotid artery. We've seen it happen in the legs. It is, so, it is so powerful and so dramatic that any caregiver who has experienced how their patients have blossomed with this would never go to the diets that you described that you're being taught in school, which do what? Which continue to destroy and injure the endothelial cells. So you cannot get a cure with that. Absolutely. It's, it's out that are going to determine that. And I'm, and I'm going to share with you tonight our most recent study of some 200 patients, which will be published in about uh, 55 days. Uh, I think it's coming out in the May issue of the Journal of Family Practice. We took 200 patients who were ravaged with coronary artery heart disease. Now, everybody has said that one of the problems you're going to have is getting compliance. Well, uh, we found that it is absolutely a mistaken belief to think that these patients will not comply. For example, our technique revealed in these 200 patients that we had a compliance of close to four years of 89.3%, uh, which is almost 90%, wow. which is extremely exciting. Now, how did those nine, how did those 90% do over that period? 99.4% of those 90% who were adherent had no further cardiac events, that is, death, stroke, or heart attack. And uh, it's, it's really quite striking when you compare that with any of the well-known studies using the usual approach. Of course. About 20 to 25% recurrence. There's a, literally, this is about a 40-fold difference in success. And it really makes me... Uh, hope that both dietitians, schools, and especially my profession itself, uh, really has to have a rethink because present cardiology, the leading killer of, this, of Western civilization, which doesn't even exist in many areas of this planet where they do not, where they eat only plant-based nutrition. It's uh, really quite uh, powerful to know that our cardiology budget in this country is 45% of Medicare. And sadly, what is cardiology today? It is your first stent, your second stent, your third, fourth, or fifth stent, 
then maybe it's time for a bypass. Then you have to have stents to keep the bypass open. Then the patient finally develops congestive heart failure and they die. Die of what? A completely benign foodborne illness that never had its causation treated. And uh, I think that present cardiology is going to recognize that their present techniques can't cure patients. Their present techniques will never end the epidemic. Their present techniques are financially unsustainable, even in the wealthiest country on the planet. And as I said earlier, I think it's an absolutely mistaken belief to think that patients will not make this type of lifestyle change. We proved that. And, and uh, it's not that the message is wrong. It's really how the message is articulated. And uh, I should share with you that I think the reason that we have this degree of compliance is that we show the patient's respect. Now, how do you show a patient respect? You give them your time. So that when we do our counseling session, it is one single intensive five and a half hour session where these patients are going to learn all about what it is that they did that created the disease and precisely how it is that they can be empowered to literally not only vanquish the disease, but begin to reverse it. And uh, the other thing that we found that I think is so important in getting them to adhere is about 10 days before we have one of our sessions, and we do this with no more than usually 10 or 12 patients at a time uh, with their spouse or partner, significant other who comes for free. And every one of those patients and their phone number I receive 10 days before they come so that I have an opportunity to call every one of these patients because I have to get my arms around their story. And at the same time, they have an opportunity to ask questions of me so that we have a strong platform as they come into this intensive counseling seminar. And they, uh, they also get a very hefty notebook at the seminar that has a copy of every one of my PowerPoint slides, several of our scientific articles, a 44-page handout that has many additional recipes, which combined with the 160, which are in our book, which we include. And then there's a, a marvelous hour and a quarter presentation from a woman who's had 30 years experience acquiring and preparing plant-based foods, dealing with reading ingredients, dealing with travel, dealing with restaurants. And then we give everybody a DVD of the entire counseling seminar so that when they go home, if they get rusty on some area, they can flip this back on and get themselves back up to speed. And we always have someone who is a local or regional representative share their story of success so that those who are uh, in attendance can say to themselves, listen, if she or she can do this, I can do this. Then we have an opportunity to answer questions, a delightful plant-based luncheon, and then stay in touch as necessary, either through email or phone call. But, uh, I think it may be a little bit unfair of me to ask our cardiology colleagues to shoulder the burden of this lifestyle transition. They have very busy schedules. Uh, they don't, may not have the passion for this. They certainly don't have any training in nutrition or in behavioral modification. But those of us in lifestyle medicine welcome the opportunity to work synergistically in the spirit of cooperative endeavor with our cardiovascular colleagues to help their patients be empowered to make this transition. And I'm, uh, I've been into this long enough and deeply enough now that I feel it is absolutely unconscionable not to mention this option to patients.